In my first video on galvanic cells, I went over what a galvanic cell is, what are the key components in all galvanic cells. If I were to use zinc and copper as my half cells or my half reactions, when I look those up in a standard reduction potential chart that you'd have in your book, which one of these reduction reactions would have to be reversed to be an oxidization reaction or an oxidation reaction to create a cell potential that is positive? and then write the overall reaction. After that, I modeled a particulate level image of what this would look like before the salt bridge has been added. In this video, I'm gonna move on to adding the salt bridge and generating an electric current, and then we'll model it. And we're gonna start though with labeling everything we can about these oxidation and reduction half reactions, as well as the overall reaction. That includes the anode cathode, the oxidizing and reducing agent, and other things. If you'd like a copy of these notes, go to the YouTube description below. You can make a copy of that Google Doc, print it back to back, fold it in half, what I call hamburger, and right above here where it says kind of stage two, which is this video, you should be able to have room to write these notes down. All right, so let's just get started. So let's just play a quick little what if game. What if my two half reactions didn't have the same number of electrons right away like this? So let's say this was a three and this stayed a two, okay? And now these charges would have to change, but let's just play the pretend game. So what happened is if this was a three, I would multiply everything by two so that that would be six. And if this was a two, I would have to multiply everything by three so that this also would be a six. Now, if I did that, I would not multiply this voltage. I would still just have one of them as an oxidation and reverse it and then add them up. So I would still get a cell potential where I would add these two numbers together. Okay, next, let's just write the overall net ionic equation and let's just kind of talk through what's happening again. So copper ions in their aqueous form are going to take in electrons, okay? Two electrons that were produced from the zinc and now they're gonna take those in. The zinc that is in a zero oxidation state as a solid is then going to turn into zinc ions in solution and copper solid, which will be a zero oxidation state, will be created. So that's kind of the sentence in words or, you know, this chemical reaction, I would say, kind of in words. So let's start labeling everything and then we'll get to the particulate model. So first off, you may have to label which species is oxidized and which is reduced. First off, realize that it's only the reactants that can be labeled as the oxidized and reduced, not the products. So the copper two plus we're gonna say is reduced because it's part of the reduction reaction and the zinc neutral solid is oxidized. So that's the first thing that you might be asked to do. Next, after that, you might have to say about the oxidizing and reducing agent. So the substance that's reduced is kind of like the opposite. Is the, so the copper two plus ions are reduced and is the oxidizing agent. And that's because it's doing kind of the work of oxidizing the other substance. And then if it's oxidized, it's the reducing agent. So that's something that you might have to do also and label those. Next is what about which one is at the anode and which one is at the cathode, okay? So what I like to do is I like to just use this little acronym, Leo Ger, but I make it into a name, Leo A Gerg, and I'll give you another possibility too. So this helps me decide which one is at the anode or the electrode that's going to be labeled the anode and which one is labeled as the cathode. So it's basically simple. You just say if you lose electrons, you're oxidized. And then that's going to happen at the anode or the electrode that that's happening at is called the anode. And if you gain electrons, you're reduced. This is where some people might use that oil rig but that's gonna happen at the cathode. So what I'm gonna do below here is kind of label my um, electrodes here. I'm actually gonna go right to here. I'm gonna label them in pink. So this was the um, zinc. Okay, so you might wanna color this again. So this was the zinc. And the zinc is 
you know, losing electrons. So then we're going to label this one as the anode. And then on the other side here, we had copper, or copper metal. And yes, you'll notice that the pictures are different than they were on the first page, so that you don't have to draw these. It has gained some mass. We'll talk about that in this video too. But let's just label then this as the cathode. The other thing that goes along with that is the anode is sort of like the negative end. So I, sometimes I like to put it up here, but some will put it down here. And then the positive is the cathode. So you'll see that also possibly in your um, labeling. All right, so let's go back up here and kind of label this here. And what I would do is I would say that the uh, copper, kind of the copper solid electrode is the cathode. And the zinc solid electrode, or that, you can even say that half cell, is the anode. And again, I just used my little Leo A. Gerk um, kind of pretend little name there to do that. Remember, losing electrons is oxidized, which is what happened with the zinc. And that's going to happen at the anode. And if you're going to reduce something, it's going to be called the oxidizing agent. But if it's reduced, then that is the side that is gaining electrons, and that's going to be at the cathode. All right, one more thing I wanted to label, which is something called the line notation. So what you'll do is on the left, if you don't want to draw out the image below, you could just do a shorthand of all of this, which we'll finish labeling more in just a little bit. What you'll do is you'll start with your anode and you'll say, okay, what is the anode? And you'd say it's zinc. And then zinc is in contact with zinc ions in solution. And they are one molar at this point. We first insert the salt bridge or add it. Then there's the salt bridge. The salt bridge is in contact with, so if you take a look, the salt bridge is in contact with the copper two plus ions, one molar solution. And then they're in contact with the copper, that's the solid. And if you want to put, you know, AQ for states of matter for these, you can too. All right, so then it's just anode, cathode, kind of alphabetical. And you have your little line notation. So I'm just going to take a look and kind of make sure that I've covered everything that I wanted to cover with this. And it looks good. All right, so on to the particulate labeling then. So first off, let's kind of think about what's happening. I'm going to put the half reactions in here. I'm going to put them in pink, okay, off to the side. So don't forget that our zinc we're saying is going to produce the electrons and turn into zinc ions and two electrons are going to come off for every one zinc. Over on the other side we're going to say that the copper two plus ions that are in the solution are going to gain those two electrons. One copper gains two electrons and then goes into a copper solid form and has a zero for an oxidation state. Okay, so now I kind of have, again, my voltmeter here, if you want to label all these from the first video, and this again was called the salt bridge. Can't hurt to label these again. And then these are called the half cells here, okay? Half of the reaction. The salt bridge is inserted, so this reaction has started. So let's now start labeling what's going on. So at the zinc one, you can see that from this picture, it's a little dramatic, but we have some of the zinc has been kind of like not really missing, but what happened is some of the solid zinc is now in the ion form. So I don't know if you remember, but I drew six of these. What I'm gonna do this time is say, well, we have, you know, if we're kind of modeling it, we have less. I'm just gonna say we have four. That means in the zinc solid form, we have two that have gone into the zinc ion form. Okay, so again, the picture is a little dramatic, but it's okay. So don't forget that we had, when we started this, we had six. Remember, they're smaller in size because they're a cation of the original, what's called parent atom. So that's six of those. And now I have two more because the two that were here are now ions in solution. So say there's those two. And then the electrons are going to come off and they're going to go up the wire. So we're going to label those in just a second. But these electrons right here, okay. And if we had two missing, I'm actually going to say there's four electrons that are kind of going up this wire. Now, it wasn't zinc all by itself. It was a one molar zinc sulfate solution. And in the previous video I went over for sulfate, I'm just going to draw little red dots. Okay, so I'm going to say there were six. 
And we'll talk about what's going to happen in the salt bridge in just a second. Think about the charge at this point, you know, is it, is it neutral in this solution? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, which are times two minus. Okay, so that's 12 minus. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times two plus is 16 plus. So we have kind of a uh, not a neutral solution here at this point, and that's where the salt bridge will come into play. But let's not do that yet. Let's just go over to the copper side and see what's going on over here. Okay, for our copper side, don't forget that it's going to take these electrons. They're going to come through the um, metal and in, from the wire through the metal and then into the solution. And some of these copper ions, that's what this is saying, are going to absorb those electrons and become copper solid. So remember how I said I had six? One, two, three. So check the longest part of this video. Four, five. And six, well, if I just had four electrons come through here from the zinc total, remember two electrons for each one, that means I'm gonna have two more copper that are gonna be able to kind of plate on the outside, which is why the size, you know, if you look at this, that's not looking the same anymore. We have an increase in mass, which we're gonna write in just a second. So then I'm only gonna draw four of those because remember we started with six. And then we still have the sulfates. So I'm gonna have six sulfates in here. Now think about kind of the charge again. You've got the opposite thing going on here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, two minuses, and then one, two, three, four, two pluses. So again, the charge is not uh, net neutral at this point. Let's label these. Oops, that's the wrong color. Um, so this is again our copper, still the wrong color. I want orange, here we go. Copper as a solid, and then, that's kind of messy copper as a solid, and then these are our copper two plus ions. And at this point, again, we're saying we started with one molar of copper two sulfate solution, but as you can see, something is happening with the concentration here. And before you kind of even make a guess, I'm gonna color code it and see if this helps you. Remember that I said that copper solutions are typically blue or bright blue if they're really, you know, like one molar? I'll give you a hint. This solution, if you were kind of looking at it, it would start to be a little less blue, okay? Now, that leads into the third video at some point about what's going to happen to these molarities and are they no longer at standard states. Right now, we're going to say they are. All right, so let's draw these electrons first and then we'll talk about that salt bridge. So, what we're going to have is these electrons are going to go up through the wire. So, I'm just going to say electron electron and electrons. Really common that you'll see this. Kind of nice I have four electrons total. Or we could kind of model it and say in the wire, there's the wire, but there's also these electrons being transported through here. And I'm just going to say there's four here, okay, at one point in time, and then they're over here, and they come down in through the metal and then into the solution. Our voltmeter should read now um, if it's an old-fashioned voltmeter, it might have a little arrow dial kind of thing, but it's going to read, um, it should read 1.10 volts. So maybe right here was zero. Maybe this is like where the one is and the two's over here or something. Okay. So our voltmeter should read 1.10 volts because we have this at standard states, at least for right now, we'll say. All right. Next is what's going on in that salt bridge. So let me go back to what is the salt bridge. So don't forget that the salt bridge was one molar sodium sulfate, and then it's soaked in, the solution is just soaking in, usually this is like filter paper or something. So what that means again is we have sodium ions, and remember I said two sodium ions for every one sulfate ion. And I'll do red for sulfate, okay? I wanted there to be a little different uh, ratio here. So what we need to decide is what ions are coming into the solution. Are the sulfates going in here or are they going in here? So let's just go back to this picture and decide. Remember you had one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what's going to happen is we are going to need those negative charge sulfates and two of them to be specific if we're being picky with the charge. They're, they are going to go into the solution here, so in through the salt bridge, down into here, we're going to send in some sulfates, and you know, if you wanted to then add them to this picture, you could. I'll kind of go like this. They might go here and here, right? And they're going to help with what's called the neutrality of that solution. All right, then on the other side, what's going to happen over here? So let's just again kind of think mathematically. 
So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are the two minuses. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4. But be careful. Sodium only carries a plus 1 charge. So it's not just going to be me putting in here, you know, 1, 2 sodium. They're only a 1 plus. I'm going to need 4 of them, 4 pluses to kind of go in. So they're going to have the ability to go through the salt bridge into the solution here to help because we're missing, you know, some of the positive charge now has become a neutral metal on the cathode there, that, that electrode. All right, so if you wanted to, you could even say, you know, at some point these little sodium ions will kind of make them open. They get into this uh, solution. Now, last but not least, there is a possibility that your ions could go up into the salt bridge. It's not typically asked, but there is a possibility that we had excess, you know, negative charge. There is a possibility that sulfates could make their way up through there because remember at one point we had too many. And then over here, it's almost like we have too much positive charge. So there is a possibility that some of these zinc ions that are being formed, let me actually slide this down a little bit. These zinc ions that are being formed by coming off of the zinc metal, they, and becoming two plus, they could also go up into that salt bridge to help with the neutrality of these solutions. All right, I'm just gonna make one little look-see to make sure everything's right and there's no errors. So again, we have our electrodes here, our uh, anode and cathode. Uh, I didn't label copper here, let's do that right away. So we have our cathode is the copper in this case. Because it's gaining electrons, we have that little side reaction over here. And we have our anode, which is the zinc, and it's gonna be losing electrons. These electrons are gonna come off and go through the voltmeter and be red. And they're able to then go into the solution, grab some of the coppers that were in here, there were two that are missing now, and turn them into copper, uh, sorry, from copper ions into copper solid zero. So if you wanna add a little, a little zero up here, that's not a naught, that's an actual zero for an oxidation state. And then we have the opposite story, which is really how it all started. We have some of our uh, zinc as a solid neutral metal turning into ions being added to the solution. And then the electrons coming off and going through the wire. The sulfate has to come through the salt bridge to balance the charge, make more negatives kind of appear. And the positive uh, sodium ions have to come through the salt bridge to help out keeping this part neutral because we're missing the copper two plus ions. All right, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about what's gonna happen now if we're not at standard states. Maybe we're not at one molar anymore because we've let this battery run or the cell run and the voltage starts to change. And then at some point in the fourth video, I'm gonna go over it reaches equilibrium, which we call kind of a dead battery. Last but not least, I did just think of one more thing. It was actually super important and I said it, but we never wrote it. Don't forget that you might wanna write down that the mass of the copper electrode increases as this cell runs. And the opposite's gonna happen with the other uh, electrode, the mass of our zinc electrode is gonna decrease as this cell runs. So I said it, but I never wrote it. I'm glad I just thought of it right now before I ended this video and I, we move on to the third kind of stage or the third part of a galvanic cell and when it's no longer at um, standard states. All right, good luck, chemists. Um, last but not least, if you really wanted to, you know, you could label this as the oxidation half and this is the reduction half, but that's all I can think of that we could put in here. Otherwise, I think we did a great job in this video getting through a lot of content and a lot of labeling. And hopefully in the next video, we'll be able to go over the delta G equation and in the last video, the NERST equation. All right, good luck, chemists. I'm just gonna kind of leave it right here. And hopefully you'll watch my third and fourth video.